friends, this is an intense image-based MCQ discussion. For all your entrance exams, that is your competitive exams, you will be facing either image-based or audio-based or video-based questions also, nobody knows. As the trend keeps on changing, let's actually equip ourselves for answering all kinds of questions like this. So we take images. Please remember, image-based questions has one important qualm. The point is, unless you know what the image is, you will not be able to touch the MCQ. People generally believe MCQs are supposed to be easy if they are attached with MCQs and images. Please remember, if a student does not know what the image is, then trying to understand what the question is made up of or what kind of option they have to go for will all become futile. So, if at all a question is raised on hand, but the student can't even make out if it is a hand and he thinks his abdomen, then automatically the thought process will change, the, uh, the know-how will be changing, you will not be in a position to answer comfortably. For that reason, let us make ourselves more acquainted with a lot of images. The more the number of images we'll see, the easier it gets in the long run. So let's look at the first question here. Do not jump into conclusions with any answer because every question has been framed with so much amount of standards that you will be able to first understand the picture, then understand the question, then link the picture and the question. Let's go. All the following are transmitted by the bug in the picture, except. So first, you have to know what this bug is. Then you should also be bringing the knowledge of the recall memory. You have to know every bug will be transmitting what kind of infection. On that basis, look at the options. Babesia microti, Borrelia burgdorferi, Anaplasma phagocytophilum, and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Have a guess. First, ask yourself what the bug is. Did you think of the bug? Okay. Now, look at the number of feet. We have four pairs. Think of the bugs which have only three pairs. And look at the color of the pairs of legs. And look at something that has been circled on the surface of the bug. This would be the cover. It referred to as the exoskeleton. On the exoskeleton, can you see some kind of weird markings? Okay. Now, let's have a discussion. Please remember, if at all you think about this particular bug, it has to be exodus tick. Why? Remember, you'll be having four pairs. The legs can be black to brown. And you can expect ornamentation. What you're seeing here is ornamentation on the surface of the vector. Okay, now what are the others that are transmitted by the exodus bite? You'll be having Borrelia neonatoli, Borrelia myoni. Just for your information, the exodus tick is capable of spreading Borrelia neonatoli and Borrelia myoni. RMSF is transmitted by Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, is transmitted by American Dog Tick, Rocky Mountain Wood Tick, the Brown Dog Tick, the Brown Dog Tick, another tick species related to the RMSF in Central and South America. So what do you think is the answer? The answer is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. The question may look very easy on the top. If you could make out it is a tick, you should be thinking that, okay, if I know all the tick-based answers, I'll be able to answer. But Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is also transferred by a tick. Now, this tick is exodus tick. The tick that actually causes or spreads Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever would be different from that of the exodus tick, which would be again Dermacenter variabilis, known as American Dog Tick. The Derma Center Andersoni, known as the Rocky Mountain Wood Tick. Then we have Ricecephalus sanguineus, which is actually the brown dog tick. So we have three major ticks, which are capable of spreading Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, but still none of them can be exodus. That reduces the question, exodus tick can spread what? Babesia microti, Borrelia burgdorferi, Anaplasma phagocytophilum. This anaplasma is an atypical bacteria coming in the same category as what you see in case of Borrelia, Leptospira, Tryponema, Rickettsia, Chlamydia, etc. So remember, there are atypical bacteria which are quite in number. All mycoplasmas, all mycobacteria, Rickettsia, Chlamydia. Then you have Legionella and mycoplasma. Sometimes people call Actromyceles and Nocardia as atypical. It is not true because they are capable of accepting and forming pus. Here, Babesia microti, who is known for causing babesiosis, 
What are the other things that you have to know from this question? Babesia microti can be spread by the tick. It causes intracellularity as an infection. Intracellular infection inside what? They are intracellular inside the RBCs. And what about Borrelia burgdorferi? This is known for causing Lyme's disease. This Lyme's disease has three stages. First stage of skin lesion where you have erythema chronica migraines. Second stage is where you believe the organism can spread to the heart and the CNS. In the heart, it can cause your cardiovascular system will go for a block. The most common manifestation can be atrioventricular block. It is also capable of causing arrhythmias. In the CNS, it is capable of causing meningoencephalitis. The third stage is destructive stage where the arthropathy can be destructive in nature. Next, we look at anaplasma phagocytophilum. We will be discussing sooner or later. Now, look at this. Why did we learn about anaplasmosis? See, this is called as human granulocyte of anaplasmosis. The granulocytes rather than monocytes or mononuclear cells are infected. We look at granulocytes. Not monocytes. Why do I say that? Because generally, when these organisms are atypical, they should be dealt by macrophages. I repeat once again, atypical bacteria are dealt by macrophages. Who all? Again, think about mycoplasma, mycobacteria, rickettsia, chlamydia. And if possible, you can bring in leptospira. But leptospira then really does not actually need any kind of specific cells to attack. So, you have to think of macrophages when we are thinking about atypical bacteria. But this is atypical of atypical. So they are not being infected by the mononuclear cells like monocytes and they are attacked by the granulocytes which are polymorphonuclear glycosides. And the disease is clinically indistinguishable from that caused by Ehrlichia schaffensis. Ehrlichia schaffensis is known for causing Ehrlichiosis. This can be very similar but absolutely different from that of Ehrlichiosis. The organism forms an inclusion body called as Morula. Who? Ehrlichia. Because Ehrlichia is a type of rickettsia. The morula, which is shaped like a mulberry, is indistinguishable from that found by the early shia. So, I repeat, rickettsia as a variance. One such variant of rickettsia would be Bartonella. Then we have Coxiella. Then we have Orientia. Then we have Erlichia. Among this, I want you to understand, Bartonella has been almost taken up by the rickett cell family. For example, if I say Bartonella hensile and Bartonella quintana, the Bartonella hensile may belong to Bartonella. But Bartonella quintana comes under Rochelinia quintana, which is Rickettsia quintana. So, there is a very strong relationship between that of Rickettsia and Bartonella. Coxiella does not carry the name of Rickettsia. Coxiella burnet is very unique among all the other Rickettsia because Coxiella is capable of spreading by lice, less probably, but most probably by aerosol formation. And this organism is a respiratory pathogen. It is known for causing atypical pneumonia. And the properties of atypical pneumonia you see in case of Coxiella Q fever will be similar to the atypical pneumonia you see in case of chlamydia. Orientia can actually be acquired by Rickettsia. So, Orientia suzugamushi can be called by Rickettsia suzugamushi also, which is known for causing scrub typhus, while Rickettsia's variant, but it is not called as Rickettsia at any point of time, is Ehrlichia. Now, the inclusion bodies, as a matter of fact, are mostly found in viruses. The variant of inclusion body that can be found in bacteriology would be in case of chlamydia. So, the unique rickettsia, which is known for actually having inclusion bodies, will be in the form of Ehrlichia. Those inclusion bodies are called as morula. So, I want you to understand this human granulocytic anaplasmosis is running parallel to that of a disease caused by Ehrlichia schaffensis. And this Ehrlichia schaffensis as such is known for causing morula. And this organism is also capable of causing morula. And who is the organism? The organism is Anaplasma phagocytophilum. The organism is Anaplasma phagocytophilum, whose properties can be similar to that of Ehrlichiosis. 
The purpose of such questions is to make you understand that these kind of organisms exist. Every year, at least one new organism can be introduced in microbiology questions or at least one new diagnostic test has been introduced or at least one new condition has been introduced. So we all will be focusing on COVID-19 and we'll be focusing on SARS-CoV-2, right? But in that meanwhile, you will be having the NBE creating questions which can actually be from our own topic of textbooks, but we'll be missing and overlooking certain topics which can make a huge difference for us. So for that reason, I'm trying to make sure we cover all the bases when we do the MCQs so that no MCQs can be a threat to you. I hope you'll be able to use the information. Once again, let me repeat, Babesia, Bartonella, and Anaplasma all can be spread by Ixorestic. The tick you saw was Ixorestic. And the other kinds of ticks like American dog tick, brown dog tick, etc. will not be looking like the Ixorestic because the color and the ornamentation. For example, if the ornamentation looks like this, it is called as satellite ornamentation and that can be seen in case of amblyoma dermacenta. This can be found in another kind of tick which can be looking like a rock star tick or a not star tick. Okay, rocky mountain spotted fever is caused by which organism? Rickettsia rickettsii. How do I remember it? When uh, you had Archimedes finding something and he was started jumping saying that Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. As a diagnostician, when you're trying to find out what organism it is, suddenly it strikes you and says, oh my God, it is Rickettsia. When you keep on jumping about Rickettsia and Rickettsia, you notice that in the process of thinking for making a diagnosis, you walked out of your office, you kept on walking, you kept on thinking, you kept on walking. At some point of time, without your knowledge, you reached the dark spot where you have come to the foothill of a mountain. You're becoming very tired and you sit on the rock of a mountain and then you understand, oh my God, this is Rickettsia. Rocky mountain spotted fever, Rickettsia, 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 you keep on shouting, that is called as Rickettsia, Rickettsia. And this rocky mountain spotted fever will produce a lot of spotted rashes because of vasculitis. And remember, this is not a typhus fever. Because it is not a typhus fever, you will be able to understand this will not be showing you bradycardia, which is relative. So no faget sign. So how will you make a diagnosis of anaplasmacytosis? Purely by serological titer looking for the antibody. This is a picture to show you the different types of ticks you will be looking at. Look at this part. This is black legged tick which is called as Ixodus capillaris. Watch the color here. In the previous picture also, you would have seen that the color was be almost brown. But please understand, brown and black can be slowly emerging into each other. But these are called as orange colored legs. Now I told you, right, Amblyo Amblyoma demacenta can be seen, Amblyoma americanum can be seen. All these are referred to as star-based tick. The example for star-based tick is lone star tick. Here, if you understand, this is the ornamentation where you are able to see a star shape projection. Here you will be seeing the multiple areas, but this one is actually a male. In males, the stars are not seen properly. Now this is the nymph and this is the larva. Now in case of larva, none of them might be distinguishable. But you will be able to distinguish between the adult females. The females are the ones who can be very clearly seen. And females are the ones who will feed on the human hosts because they need energy and nutrition for their pregnant state. So when they are pregnant, they will try to come and feed on you. The same plausible explanation can be seen in case of mosquitoes also. Only female mosquitoes will bite you. And not all female mosquitoes will bite you when they cause malaria. Only the pregnant females will bite you because they want the blood as their nutrition for their new developing eggs. Now look at this, this is lone star tick, this is dog tick, dog tick D for D, when they use the word derma center, please understand they are talking about dog tick. This is the most common tick that can be found on the hair and the feet of the dog and this dog tick can be biting you to spread Rocky Mountain spotted fever also. Now look at the ornamentation here, this is the ornamentation and all the ticks are capable of having four pairs of feet. So the moment you see four pairs of feet, do not worry, think about a tick. In case of mites, you may have three paired feet. Okay, now look at the other explanations here. This has been for your importance only. Many times, this is the area where you can make mistakes. Do not make silly mistakes in your exams. Now, what you are seeing here, 
would be American Dogtick. Derma Center Variabilis. Ornamentation is seen on the back. Can you see all the ornamentations here? Now this one is adult activity. This is male. This is female. And when will you have them? Their activity can be seen between March to July, generally in case of summer. Remember, American Doctic will show its activity in the summer. Next, look at black-legged deer tick. What is Ixodes capillaris? It is technically a deer tick coming over up to the human beings. Black-legged. This is the male. This is the female. The female will be bigger in size compared to that of male in almost all the situations. Look at this part. The female is bigger. Male is smaller. Here also female is bigger. Male is smaller. Now look at the lone star tick. In the lone star tick, you can see a single exactly a single kind of star-like lesion which can make the difference. When you see a single small pokey ornamentation, you can think of your lone star tick. This is Amblyoma derma center or Amblyoma americana. And remember, you will be having the activity of the lone star tick happening in all life stages. They also attack in summer. I mean, the larva, the nymph, the adult, all three can be spreading. Here, look at this. All life stages can bite you, that is in case of exorostic, the male, female adults, the larva, the lymph, all can attack you. They mostly attack all the year, year round attack can be seen in case of your exorostic. So I repeat once again, these are important questions. When you do not understand the difference between the ticks, any question raised from the tick based question will become difficult for you. For that reason, just have an idea that there are three major forms of tick. One is American dog tick, the other one is lone star tick, the third one is exorostic. We are focusing on exorostic mostly in our textbooks, but we forget about the other ticks also. So when we focus on Rocky Mountain spotted fever, it is the only thing that is among Richard said not caused by exorostic, it is caused by your dog tick. And the difference is you will be having the American dog tick, only the adults will be attacking. When it comes to exorostic and that of lone star tick, adults, larva, nymph, all can attack. And between that of the American dog tick and exorostic, you can differentiate a great thing. These American dog tick and lone star tick will attack in the summers. But exorostic can attack throughout the year. That is why exorus is more famous than all the other tick. You remember exorus only because of this reason. Okay. Now look at this picture. Look at this culture medium and look at this picture. Just take a look. So what are the things I want you to focus on? First, we take a water sample. Nothing, just a water sample. And we are inoculating 15 tubes. You will be having 0.1 ml in this tube, 1 ml in this tube, and 10 ml in this tube. From there, you post it on lactose or laurel tryptose broth. Then you go for incubation at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Now, if at all you have gas, you will be able to see positive test. If there are no gas, you go for no coliforms. Now look at the word written here. Look at the word written here. Look at the word written here. This is multiple tube fermentation test. And look at this. So technically, what is the common name for everything that is happening? This is called as a coliform test, which can be presentive, confirmative and completed.